Joining us right now in a first on CNBC interview is Kelly Steckelberg. She, of course, is Zoom's chief financial officer. And, and Kelly, welcome. Thanks for being here today. Thank you. Let, let's talk a little bit about the enterprise business, because I think that's really the engine that has been driving thing. Explain what the enterprise business is and what's happening there right now. So you're exactly right. Our enterprise business is all of our customers that are touched by our direct sales organization or a channel partner. And that business is really driving the growth of the business. It grew 24% year over year in FY23, which we just completed in January. And while you know we have seen some overall macro headwinds, we do expect this portion of the business to drive the growth in FY24. The, the second segment of our business is our online segment. And this is all the customers that self-serve online. And this comprises now about 45% of our business. We saw significant growth here during the pandemic, which it was about 20% of our revenue pre-pandemic. And this is an area where we've seen a little more contraction. And so the focus here for FY24 is getting this business really stabilized on a dollar basis. And what that will do then is stop the, the tampening down that it's having on the overall growth rate of the business, which, as you say, is really being driven by the enterprise segment. OK, so if consumers are, are maybe using Zoom less as they're going back to the office more, how do you stabilize the dollars in that business? Do you raise the, the subscription price or do you lower it to bring in more subscribers? What's the magic formula? Well, there are really kind of three components to that magic formula. First of all, we are really focused on improving the retention rates, which we have seen come down to, again, sort of lows that we were experiencing three to four years ago. The product has improved dramatically, the way that customers are able to come to the website and self-serve. Also, there are lots of initiatives in this segment to drive growth, including expanding the market opportunity through offerings, new pricing and packaging, also new currency and payment types that are available. And then last but not least, yes, we are raising prices. We announced a price increase, which will be effective March 1st for our monthly customers. But what that's done, we've seen a transition to more annual customers, annual packages that they're buying, which allows them to avail themselves of further discounts. Okay, let's talk more about the enterprise business, because I, I think that's probably the area where you compete more with a Microsoft Teams or with the Cisco product. Um, we have heard some different things with chat GPT being so hot. Microsoft is already talking about incorporating some of that artificial intelligence into uh, the Teams product that it offers. I, I know that this is something you all are talking about, too. Your CEO mentioned it yesterday on the call, but I, I guess I don't even understand what, what's needed in AI in terms of servicing a client like this? What, what, what can you do with AI? Of course. So AI is not new to the Zoom portfolio. We have been using it for a while in services like transcription, so that after a meeting, you can get a, you know, a recording, but also a transcription of what was said. Translation, which is, of course, really helpful when you're working with global teams. We recently announced Zoom Virtual Agent as part of our contact center solution. So this is a conversational AI mechanism that allows customers, again, customers and companies to serve their customers very quickly and efficiently to help them find answers. And so that's just a few areas where we're already using AI. And as Eric touched on yesterday, we're going to continue to partner with great companies like OpenAI to further develop mechanisms which just make all of your collaboration experiences more intelligent.